There is no one to deride me But you got to have friends The feelings are so strong You got to have friends Welcome to In the Loop with Laura. On this friend segment, I am honored to have Julie Boldry with me. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me. Julie is the proprietress of the Scarlet Thread Quilt Company. She lives just south of town, a bit east of the Caston High School, and she has her own store online. It's an Etsy store, and if you want to find it, you can look for it on Facebook. Yes. On, it's the Scarlet yeah. Quilt, company. Scarlet Thread Quilt oh, Company. Yes. And you can like her on Facebook and find out some of the things that are happening down there, as well as uh, you have a website or an Etsy store. You want to give the Etsy yes, store a website? Yes, we have an Etsy store. Um, it's just the scarletthreadquiltco.etsy.com. So just drop the, the the on the beginning. And for those of you who aren't aware of Etsy, what can you tell us about Etsy? Um, Etsy is um, a website where you can host your own individual store without hosting your own website. So it's typically... Um, the easiest way to understand it is like eBay, where you can have your own store, but it is specifically for handmade items mm -hmm. or people that sell supplies for handmade items. So your Etsy store, well, maybe we should back up because you started this whole business venture as a quilter. Yes. And as a passion when you were younger for wanting to have your own store. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's kind of a lot of things that came together to um, start this Scarlet Thread Quilt Company. I did grow up um, with a mom and a grandma who sewed a lot. Hmm. They made all of my clothes. We spent hours in the fabric store and I got to pick out the fabrics. And so it's some place I was really comfortable with from a young age. Like you mentioned, in addition, there's always been this little thing in me wanting to make things and thinking I can sell them. Hmm. When I was little, I painted rocks and sold them to my grandmother. And I thought I had sold a couple to my mother's friend, and she told me recently that she, in fact, bought them. Aww. Oh, so, but I do actually, um, when my grandmother passed a few away a few years ago, I found those little rocks still in her bathroom. So I brought those home, and I have my first five-cent painted rocks. Aww. So instead and, yeah. of framing your first dollar, you're going to do a little yeah, gonna, memory yeah, box yes, with memory your box first my rocks. Your so. first rock. So how did you get involved in quilting itself rather than making garments or sure. that kind of thing? Um, I have moved to the Fulton County area with my husband. But not from far away. No, I, I grew up near Lewis Cass, so I was in Cass County. I, I was just a Lewis Cass girl, but I hadn't been up this way. And we moved here, and I didn't know a lot of people, and I had a new baby, and some ladies from church invited me to their quilting day. And I thought... Uh, well, okay, quilting, sure. I, I have a sewing machine. I, I need to make some new friends. It sounds like fun. I'll go. So I went, and I made my first quilt, just a little table topper, and then I was hooked. And a couple years later, when I had about four dozen quilt tops and nowhere to quilt them, <laughs> um, I learned about this wonderful invention called the long arm quilting long -arm machine. quilting machine. A few heartstrings are tugging out there, I'm okay. sure. Okay, yes. Well, I'm sure it had been around for years, but I never heard of one. The only thing I had ever seen was hand quilting, because my mom did a little bit of quilting when I was growing up, hmm. and she'd let me try to quilt her block or two, and I hated it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to me, quilting was, you know... But in any case, I heard about this long-arm quilting machine where you could load your, your quilt top and your back and drive this great big machine, this great big sewing machine, and machine quilted, and it's done. And it will take you a few hours instead of a few years for some of so. us, myself included. So after I uh, started quilting for a couple of years and had all those quilt tops that were just too big to quilt on my sewing machine, with the help of my grandmother, I was able to Aww. get my own, my first, well, my still my only, my long arm quilting machine. Oh, how sweet that she was involved in that. Yes, yeah, so she helped me with that. And you sincerely went through four dozen quilt tops and you did them all? Um, I actually still have a few of those on the to-do pile. Well, they're probably quite old quilt tops. They and, are at this point, yeah. And I'm sure that then that was, it sounds like one door opens another door, opens another door. So probably by yes. that time, did you have other people saying, hey, Julie, I like that quilt top. Can you do this one for me? Yes. And you're starting off on a business of sorts. Exactly. Part of the um, arrangement was that if we were going to invest, mm -hmm. quilt machines mm -hmm. are rather expensive, and we're going to invest that kind of money and time into getting one, that we're going to find a way to make money with it. So I did start quilting for other people pretty quickly, really, once I got my machine. So I've been doing that now, 
for probably six and a half years, I've been long arm quilting for myself and for other people. And as with lots of hobbies that you turn into a business, you don't do it for yourself very much anymore. So right. <laughs> I've I spent a lot of time that. quilting for other people. And did you select the name The Scarlet Thread Quilt Company at that time or when you started your Etsy business, which is now two years old or more? Um, I've been selling fabrics online for a couple of years. Okay. And for about a year before that, I designed just a few quilt patterns. Okay. Like you said, one thing snowballs into another. But I had, before we started any of the business with the quilting or the patterns or the fabric, I had selected the name. Um, and I actually got that from a book I'd read, a novel by Francine Rivers called The Scarlet Thread. Oh, I know that. Okay. Yeah, so if you're looking for a good book and want to know where I got the inspiration, pick up The Scarlet Thread by Francine Rivers. It's uh, riveting, my goodness sakes. And yeah. a couple Kleenex boxes. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm also familiar with that name with one other children's book. I'll have to share that with you oh, later. wonderful. Yeah. So there you were. You mm -hmm. were long arm quilting at home. Yes. You started doing a few pattern designs, you said, about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And then how did you start your Etsy store? Well, um, I just knew I wanted to keep growing. And I also knew that I needed to do it in such a way mm. that I didn't take on a huge financial risk. Mm -hmm. That's where Etsy is wonderful if you also, because I don't have a whole lot of, I'm not tech savvy, computers, you know, I can navigate, but to set up a whole website and pay for, there's a lot of expense involved. There That's is. where I, um, Etsy came in because for free you can start a store mm -hmm. and the only cost is when you list an item and it's only 20 cents. Mm -hmm. And then of course percentages once you sell an item. So that was, that was really why I, I, I stepped into the Etsy world because it was just so easy to get started when I didn't feel very skilled with the computer world. Yeah. And then you, when did you get your logo that we have here. My lovely logo was designed by a, a nice lady about six months ago. Oh, wonderful. I kind of went with just something homemade for a while and I knew I was, you know, working on getting more and more professional of a look and yeah. so I, I took the plunge and invested in the new logo. That's so wonderful. I'm really pleased with it. Well, let's take a look at some of the things that you've long armed and okay. um, as well we will have some more of that information we've gone over with how you can reach Julie in case you want to have your things long-armed. Yeah. And we have a variety of things here from simple to more complex. And um, some of them she, well, I think all of these you don't own. One of them you own. That's <laughs> because, right, I don't because, own Because these. as you said, you get into it and you start doing it for other people. But sure. they were gracious to loan some of these back. This first one we've got is a t-shirt quilt. And I wanted her to bring this in because a lot of people as a quilter myself, this is something that people want to have done um, locally. And this is just a, a quick close-up because it's so hard to see the actual quilting, but we will hold it up for you. She is a Caston lady and has four children who've gone, yes. gone through or are going through the Caston school system. And it's just an easy stippling. Mm -hmm. It's very even because um, of this machine. And it looks like you, have you hand done it? Do you have the... Mine is all hand-guided, um, no computer, no okay. stitch regulator. This is just something you have to practice to get the stitching even um, and to get your, your pattern going. So, yeah. But a stipple, like you said, a simple meander like this is a great place to start. Okay. So let's go ahead to the front view and okay. we'll hold this up. It is heavy. T-shirt quilts are basically always heavy, aren't they? Yes. Because um, the fabric itself is thicker. Yes. And so what I have, when I've spoken with people, they say, oh, a t-shirt quilt would be great. And what that means is you take t-shirts, and you can <laughs> see right through the green one, um, t-shirts that are meaningful to the person who has done these different events. We've got Ladies Comets Basketball and um, Circle the State and 4-H. And every kid ends up getting one of these in every event they're ever in. Definitely. And there are some kids who this is all they want to wear, and when they grow out of it, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> but yes. um, a lot of people, when they graduate then, this is a really nice present to give them. Yes. So if someone were to hire you to do this, do they just hand you the T-shirts, or do they do the quilt top and then you quilt it? We can do it either way. You can make your own quilt top, and I can finish it for you. Um, typically with the T-shirt quilts to this Point, most of my customers bring me a stack of t-shirts. We go through them together, figure mm -hmm. out which ones they want to use. Um, if you have a t-shirt, for instance, this little emblem right here was from another t-shirt, and oh. we just cut that off and applicated it to the larger block. 
because that you know that one obviously is too small to make a whole block out of. So we go through them and we pick out which ones you like the best and then you get to pick out your fabrics and we do a sashing around the t-shirts here and then we do an outer border which is what you see here. So they get to pick out that and then you also get to pick out the fabric that goes on the back and this particular one is a cotton, a floral cotton. Ooh. But I also have this wonderful fabric that's called Minky or Cuddle, mm. and it's very, very soft A lot of cuddly. baby blankets are made out of that these days. And a lot of my t-shirt quilt customers are opting for that on the back, too, and it, it makes it heavier and warmer, and it's so soft and cuddly, and it doesn't cost anymore because it's a little bit wider, so oh. they can get the upgraded fabric for the same price. So do they do that on a full-size quilt or just on, I think of Minky would be nice for a lap quilt, but they do it for the whole thing? Yep, we can do it for both. And it yeah. washes just... Fine it does. with everything. It does. It washes just fine. Well, that's a great, yeah. great idea and a great service. And I just appreciate this one because I have seen some that the t-shirt sewed to the t-shirt and it's all kind of baggy because it's the t-shirt material. But this um, is held down really nicely. And yeah. if I looked at it and I wasn't looking at what they said, I wouldn't even realize it was that it was t-shirts. T-shirts. Sure. Yep. Very nice. Thank you. So that's the first one. A second quilt that Julie has brought is is her own. This one actually is mine. And she, um, oh, all these greens are disappearing. <laughs> so let's do a top down. Okay. So in this, I recognize a lot of these. These are beautiful. They're bright. You said this is your colors. These are, these are my colors. These are my personal taste. And does this typify what you have in your Etsy store? Um, at the moment, this is a lot of the kind of fabrics that I carry. Um, selling on Etsy, I sell to a lot of um, younger mothers, maybe that are um, making goods for their kids. Maybe they're making blankets to sell to other customers, or they're making dresses for their little girls. Um, so that's typically mm -hmm. what has sold well for me. Um, and we'll talk about this more later, but I hope to kind of expand the look and the variety of what we offer in our shop. Okay. Eventually. How many types of fabrics do you currently, or how many mm -hmm. bolts approximately? Um, right now I carry? have at least 800 bolts of cotton. Wow. And I've been expanding into flannel and cotton sateen, which is for home decorating. Mm -hmm. And of course the minky. Um, I also am starting to get a good selection of wide backs, okay. which is the cotton, but made wider mm -hmm. off the bolt for quilts. And so some of, some of these are... Um, Kay Fassett and Amy Butler, and what are some of the other designers that you have currently? In? Okay, we carry a lot of um, Heather Bailey. There's a new um, division from RJR Fabrics called Cotton and Steel that everybody was really excited about, and we've started carrying some of those. Um, we carry a lot of different manufacturers. We carry Moda, Riley Blake, Westminster, hmm. Quilting Treasures. Mm -hmm. um, we also carry a huge variety of pre-cuts, and if you're not a quilter, mm -hmm. Uh, you may not quite appreciate it, but a pre-cut is the fabric that's already cut into squares for you or maybe into what they call a jelly roll, so it's a long strip of fabric. But they're pre-cut so that if you wanted to, you could just sew them together and you don't have to cut anything. Right. They're wonderful for a quick, fun project that gets lots of variety because there's 42 different fabrics in them. And that's one of the things I appreciate about both jelly rolls and uh, charm Charm packs. Charm packs, mm -hmm. which is, are they always five inch or are they different sizes? Yes, charm packs are always five inches and then they have what's called layer cakes mm. and they're 10 inches. And that way, instead of going through and purchasing a fat quarter of everything and not necessarily wanting all of that, right. you get all the colors within a line. Um, and like Julie said, you can put them, use those without cutting anything to make a, um, a quilt. And I am thinking, right now through some of the books that are available at Fulton County Public Library. There are a couple that are strictly mm -hmm. jelly roll mm -hmm. quilts. And so you, if you've got a jelly roll at home, purchase or go to the library and you can get that and follow the directions for one of their quilts. Mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if there's a charm pack one at, at if not. I would imagine at this point they probably have a few different pre-cuts and that includes the charm packs and the fat quarters and mm -hmm. the, the jelly rolls too. Our library is very good on quilts. I've been yes, very impressed with them. Yes, they have a big section. Yeah. So besides Fulton County Public Library, which I feel like a, a hopefully the people in the viewing audience know about, mm -hmm. um, how would somebody then who might have a quilt top like you did, mm -hmm. maybe not four dozen, maybe they are, <laughs> maybe. hidden away, how would they go about uh, contacting you or another long armor and what are the services exactly that you do? Okay. Um, if you decide that you are in the market for a long arm quilter, 
um, first of all, you just get in touch with them and give them a call. What they'll ask for is that you bring your quilt top to them that is pressed well, mm. that you make sure that all your seams are, sec are secure. You know, sometimes when you get something a little close, that will pull apart, so you want to check that. Get your threads clipped really well so that mm. things don't work out, especially if you have a light background. Those will pull through and you'll see them afterwards in your finished project. And mm -hmm. then um, you'll have your quilt top, and then if you have your own batting and backing, typically a, a long arm quilter will need you to have those at least six to eight inches larger mm -hmm. on both sides than your quilt top, because when she loads those and she pins things, she has to have enough space to, to be able to make it all fit, and that's why the back and the bat have to be quilter, or have to be larger. If you bring them to me, you can supply your own, or I also have both of those things in stock, so I can you can purchase those things from me as well. And then you put it on, you do the long arm, you charge per inch? I charge, I charge by the square inch. Okay. Um, and typically it starts at one cent per square inch, which is a really loosely spaced edge to edge design, which is the whole thing from edge to edge, which is what you just saw the t-shirt quilt. Yes. That was large and loosely spaced. Um, then we work up to custom work where each block or each border might be different. Mm -hmm. It means I have to stop and start a lot more. We're going to use a lot more thread. It's going to be more heavily quilted and that's why the cost goes up. Is this last quilt that you brought in an example of that? This one is an example of probably a low end of a custom job because there is some block work here in the middle and then the borders and the sashing have some different designs okay. as well. Let's get a view of this up close. This is one you've done for a customer and we'll move it to get the block in entirely but you can see here what she was talking about with this is the sashing and um, at this place so she came down very carefully and stopped in the corner and the sashing that comes this way she didn't stop so um, and I, I like here your thread choice. Did you did the customer request that, or you decided to go That was just something it? I chose. Um, when a customer brings a quilt, they can have as much or as little say as they want. Mm -hmm. Some people are very comfortable saying, please make this pretty, and I'd like to spend about this much. Other people have seen it. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe the pattern they bought has a picture of it already quilted, and so they want it quilted just like that picture, and sometimes we can do that. So you can just choose your threads, choose your designs. Um, this goes really nicely, though, this variegated thread. Thank and let's you. Move it so you can see a, one of the blocks. Um, so it's a, a pinwheel block, and she kind of accentuated that by giving it a little bit of a curve mm -hmm. inside each of those triangles. And uh, the whole thing looks beautiful up close. And then the border, it's difficult to see with this variegated, it's but it's yep. a big leaf here. Oh, yeah, you can see it a wee bit. A wee, big leaf here. So she is turning them and putting them out. And that's very nice for um, just eyeing it. Oh, thank you. Doing it. And then the inside, Let's you've got that. all of that same quilting coming through. It's not as easily seen um, with these colors, but I know when you wash them and when you use them, it just gets better with age. Yes. Okay. And then here's an example of the binding, and that's the last. Uh, let's go ahead and move this off. The binding is the last thing that you do and how does the binding work? Does the person bring in the binding or they bring you well, typically, fabric and you do it? Typically most customers want to do their own binding uh -huh. but occasionally I have somebody who doesn't want to um, and so again we can do it any way you want. You can pick out fabrics from the shop and I can make the binding and then attach it and finish it for you. You can bring me your binding already prepared and mm -hmm. I can attach it and finish it. I have attached it for some people and they've hand finished it themselves or this particular quilt here I have done and I machine finished it. Okay. And one, the biggest reason for me to do this is time. It goes a lot quicker than hand finishing. And it certainly um, is not going to come off. <laughs> no. And that is one thing sometimes, you know, the, the hand quilting, especially when it's for a children's quilt, it comes loose maybe a little bit more often. Oh, I've That's been my experience. I've had people bring me children's quilts and ask me to rebind them for them. And, sure, sure. And people don't understand. So for somebody who is watching and knows what a quilt is but doesn't know the parts, this is the binding. The binding goes around the entire outside mm -hmm. and it makes all those raw edges be completely covered. Yes. So for this one you attach its machine, put on, you attach it on the back, you flipped it to the front, and then you machine yes. sewed it down. And you just put a real scant seam allowance right there and this is really important though because of the whole quilt this receives probably the most wear yes because you think every time you use your quilt you're rubbing against that and it, yeah 
And so it's really essential to have a good binding nice on a quilt that you want to that you want to last for a long time because mm -hmm. you spend a lot of time and a lot of money into to, to completing a quilt. So, well, I appreciate you coming in, explaining the Etsy store. Thank you. Talking about the Facebook page, please check it out. Even if you never plan to do a quilt, um, support our local businesswoman. Yes. And there is exciting news that you are planning a storefront. You're growing. There is. Yes. The next phase of our um, our plan is to open a store here in Fulton County. Um, we've secured a location, and so now we're in the process of lots of construction and lots and lots of painting. Yay! So we're hoping around Christmas or maybe New Year's to be able to announce that it's we're ready for a grand opening. Keep your eye out then for the Scarlet Thread Quilt Company and for Julie, and thank you for coming in. Thank you very much. Welcome to the book corner of In the Loop with Laura. I'm glad that you joined us today. I have a wonderful book I would like to recommend. This is from my personal library, but if you go to the Fulton County Public Library and request it, they will interlibrary loan it for you. It is called Cast On, Bind Off, 211 Ways to Begin and End Your Knitting by Cap Cease. It's an unusual name, unusual spelling, so let me show it to you here. Here's the title, Cast On, Bind Off. And her name is C-A-P, like a hat, S-E-A-S-E, -S -E, Cap C's. And in it, it, first of all, it's a wonderful book because it opens flat completely because it has the spiral binding. You can um, not injure your book or your binding by opening it completely. And in it, she has all sorts of normal cast-ons, like a twisted loop cast-on. She has the title. She has a picture of what it looks like with a very good close-up on the actual edge. And then there are drawn pictures of how you make this with other variations. And then she has some really unusual things that I've never seen. Edging cast on. It's a beautiful one. That would look lovely on a sweater. Um, a three-strand cast on. How you make three colors in a cast on. And I have an example here. This isn't the exact cast on that I did for that. But here's an example of how you could use this. This is one of my Sami mittens that I've made and actually won a first prize in the State Fair this year. It has the tricolor cast on. So um, mashed with that in the back of the book, so the cast ons are in yellow, the bind offs are all in green. And she has names for them, stretchy bind off, and they can be matched together so that your cast on and your bind off look exactly the same. I would, and then increase bind offs, she uses a different color for each different kind. I would highly recommend this book. It's great in your library just to have on hand to peruse or to go ahead and check out the information about. Thanks for joining me on this book corner. I hope you enjoy these different um, selections that can help increase your library and your knowledge. Have a great day.